people, it's your girl Adiola. Another interesting week in Niger as we prepare for this election. My people, hey, Ashiri Titu Arifura Diye. Yeah, so did you guys see that document circulating everywhere since last Thursday that some people have been paid $20,000 to stage a protest against the opposition candidate Buhari when he goes to the Chatham House? Hey, the document listed details of what time they will get there, everything that they will do, and how much they will be paid twenty thousand dollars yes yeah, so my people you know we thought it's just a rumor until thursday money we started seeing people protesting for you but but uh, what i don't understand my people is why they can't perform better i mean with twenty thousand dollars it's a lot of money now for people to be acting confused about why they are protesting please i want you to tell me why you're doing this because you don't want dictatorship in nigeria anymore why what do you know about the general Jonah, Jonah, the general body Jonah. yes I just heard about him from people that he's not a good leader or something like that. Like, he only heard from people. Have you done your studies about him? What is that? Have you done your studies about him? No, not at all. No. But how did you come about this demonstration? I was told. I know, I don't know what to say. Okay, tell me why you're doing this demonstration. You don't really know. Why don't you know? Is it because of the voting? I never asked because of voting. I'm what do you really believe in? You're not Nigerian. I am Nigerian, but I'm... where are you from in Nigeria? Did she say Yoruba? My sister, you are from Yoruba? Where are you from in Nigeria? Yoruba. This is a lie. Ah, the devil is a liar. You're Yoruba. So I don't really know anything much. You don't know much about about politics. <laughs> Okay, so tell me what you're doing here then. I came here to, you know, support. Support who? You can talk to me, I'm your friend, I'm Nigerian, I'm from Edo State. It's Jonathan that we came to support. You came to support Jonathan. Why are you supporting Jonathan? You don't know why you're supporting him. So why are you against Buhari? Oh, I'm not against anyone, like... I'm not against anyone. I don't even know if this person is a Nigerian. They don't know Buhari, they don't know Jonathan, and they are protesting. These are students, like this. they can only work for a few hours a week. Okay. As a matter of fact, I, can, I mean, I can understand or relate to their sentiment. Okay. The reason why they not in their interest for the fact that they need to put food on their table, okay. they, have, they have to do this. So they have to do they this. They have to do this. Don't blame them. They are just a victim of the same system that have been there training us in the last six years. You know, I read somewhere that they each got 80 pounds. That's it, by the way, out of $20,000. Huh? 80 pounds. Huh? The organizers must have pocketed most of the money. Hey, my dear, who are the organizers of this fake protest? You're the one that rented this, the people. Rented care? No, not me. You ain't the one responsible. No, are you in Oh, because of recording, you don't want to talk. <laughs> no, I'm not. I don't know anything about writing. What I do for a living, I'm an event organizer. So okay. I could be APD, PDP, PPP, SSS. Okay. I just deliver. Artists, drummers. That's all I've provided. But and if drummers. the pay is good, payment? No. Payment for what? Now you are acting like you are innocent. My sister, come clean. And you know what? I just want to give kudos to the lady that filmed this video. Her name is Miss Rose P. Graham. Thank you so much, my sister. God bless you. You are the reason for the season. By the way, I heard there is another organizer. <laughs> oh, so how can we work it out? I'll give my number. Hmm? What I need, when? you understand? I need it. I need it. Um, you can, with match, the camera, match guys, everything. video. With, you know? with drums and everything. Yeah, don't worry. Small thing. That's a well, you can do New York. Huh? You can do New York. I can do Maryland anywhere. Are you no sure? Blame, yeah. But I like them to be well behaved and just to make noise. Like don't worry. Yeah. I think they are all educated. They are all graduates. They are all doing their masters. So it's not. I didn't bring the literature. You see, when they are interviewing, what they will say? It was all over internet that they, they, they were going to spend twenty thousand dollars. Why has been the kind of money is spending? People don't, yes, very extreme to the extreme. And all they abuse people are abusing. No, they are affecting themselves. You know they think I'm. You understand Yoruba? Koriro. Koriro. Bonwa. Auntie La 
back. Now your face be this. Now wow, I don't know that you have connections like this now. My sister. Hey, hey, let me see. 20,000. We must to share this money. Wow. There is God, yo, my sister. There is God. Thank you, Mr. Akin wrote to me for filming this thing. We appreciate you putting it on YouTube. Now that we know the whole thing was RNG and they can even arrange it in New York and Maryland. Anywhere, anywhere, anything is possible. My people, nobody is saying that Buari is a saint. No. Or that he's going to fix everything that has broken in Nigeria. Nobody is saying that. But why do we need to go to this lens to make the man look bad? Really? Do we need to do that? You gather people to protest and they don't even know anything about the man? Now that's a shame. That's a big shame. A BBC reporter actually asked Buhari about the protest and this is what he said. Um, I just want to start by talking about the, the protest that we can hear from outside. Um, pro and anti Buhari shows how divisive you are. Uh, what do you make of them? Well, that's, that's, that's the beauty of, the, uh, of democracy. Let, let people express their uh, opinions one way or the other. As long as they do it peacefully, it has to be accommodated by the system. And by the way, what is wrong with Ayofayo Seo Fikiti? Eh, why is the man still doing blah blah? I thought now that he got busted that he would be gentle. Maybe he would drink kool -Aid. No, he must to talk. And if Buari wasn't paying him any attention before now, the man has Kuku put himself on the map now looking for trouble. Eh, first of all, Buari went to London. Fayose insisted that the London trip is for medical treatment. I said, shoot. Yeah, so suggesting that Buari is old and sick and he's about to die. Nobody should vote for him really the man was born the same year as let me see um, daddy Gio of the redeemed church yes now in fact daddy Gio is a few months older than buari obasanjo is five years older than buari now if he goes to london will people start saying oh it's for medical treatment eh? being skinny doesn't mean that someone is dying so what is the big force even if he goes to london for treatment our president mr jonathan who is 57 was recently in london for medical treatment is anybody shouting now that he's contesting for re-election that oh he goes to to London for treatment. Eh? His madam, our uh, first lady, was also in Germany for weeks having surgeries upon surgeries. Is anybody campaigning against uh, Jonathan because he, his wife was in, in Germany for treatment? The same fire said that said, oh, Buari is in London for treatment. Came out later and said, oh, the interview that he did not in London, no, it's at the Hilton Hotel in Abuja. You see that the man is confused. <laughs> the fact that he went all the way to Abuja to show the replica of the room in Abuja makes me wonder exactly when this man has time to do his job as the governor of Ekiti State. When is he doing his job now? I appreciate that the federal government has finally disassociated itself from Ayofai Ose, but they still didn't caution him. The man needs to be cautioned. Exactly when will he start governing his state? When he spends every day on Buhari, Buhari this, Buhari that. I thought that he's married to a Jim Jim, SU mommy. So you understand? Hey, my mommy in the Lord, God bless you. Is it that you guys don't talk or the man doesn't listen? Yeah, there is God too. But you guys know that me, I don't know anything. Guess what? I'm just keeping it real. Okay, oh, shock, shock, shock. Finally, the Nigerian army has engaged Boko Haram in a serious battle. I'm telling you, it's not funny. In fact, they released a video of their airstrike against the sect. Take a look. According to the Director of Defense Information, the operation is part of the strategy of the military to fully dislodge Boko Haram. I mean, the video. If you look closely, people can be seen running in different directions. Yes, so you see what I'm saying? Eh? We thank God. I didn't know that we we're capable of doing this. Hey, you know, seeing this momentum that we have right now gives me hope that very soon, very, very soon, that Boko Haram should be completely wiped out. Next time, though, I hope that uh, the Nigerian military will please give us better uh, quality video, so you understand, so we can see what you are doing. We really appreciate this, and I do understand that they filmed this from eye up in the sky, but we should be able to do better than Boko Haram because we see the videos that they release and it's always clear we can see all their atrocities in their videos so I'm just saying that we should be able to do better than Boko Haram so I'm honestly really happy and I'm so much relieved with this development that the army has taken over Baga and other communities and they've seized many weapons from Boko Haram they also said that they've arrested many of their members some of them dressed as women but you know why I'm very happy and very excited about this what I don't understand is why we had to wait till elections 2015 why 
Ghana. Eh? Why, why, why didn't we do this in 2011 or 12 or 13, Mr. President? So you are able to do something like this and you waited. How have you been able to sleep now for the past five years? How have you been sleeping every night knowingly letting 15,000 men and women and children die before declaring war on Boko Haram? Some of our girls were kidnapped. You could have done this a long time ago, yet you did not. Like, why? Wow, my yoga, I, I hope that someone didn't tell you that, oh, you should wait till election time and then clear off Boko Haram and then people will vote for you because people like that don't really have your best interest in mind because to be honest with you, while we are very happy and we are excited, at the same time, we are also afraid of you. You know that you, you have the heart to wait this long to do the right thing. Let's not even talk about those that have been disabled as well as more than 3 million people that have been displaced because of this. And speaking of airstrike, as much as I appreciate our soldiers fighting Boko Haram right now, do you guys know that 37 civilians were killed in that operation? 37, is it not possible to coordinate better so that civilians won't have to die while we're trying to kill Boko Haram? Those people in Niger were actually burying their relatives that were killed by Boko Haram, their loved ones, when explosives started dropping. 37 civilians. And guess what? The army spokesperson did not even say anything about the civilians that were killed. He just said, oh, we killed 300 Boko Haram members in the airstrike. I'm really tired of us treating human beings as if, as if they are nothing. And you know, I can't forget our soldiers, men and women that have died since this battle against Boko Haram started, especially this recent battle. So to all their family members, please, please accept our deepest condolences. We so much appreciate their sacrifice in their fight against terrorism. We really appreciate them. May their souls rest in peace. But you know what? Thank God for elections. Thank God for elections. If not for elections, some people will not start doing things that they are supposed to have been doing years and years ago. Like granting interviews to Nigerian media houses uh, besides the famous media chat. Nigerian media houses, you know, not just to Oyimbo people, sure you understand. I'm sure that you guys have seen Mr. President's interview with Miss Mo Abudu and also his interview with Tribune, his interview with This Day, and now he's organizing what they call Meet the President, starting in Lagos. I actually really like that. I just wish that they've been doing this, you know, before now. I wish they didn't wait till elections before we can meet our president. The only thing that I don't like in the ad for meet the president is where it says once in a lifetime event i said why does this have to be once in a lifetime event now <laughs> anyway i called them to make my own reservation for the event so you understand because when i saw rsvp i thought uh, that means call us if you want to be there i don't know that milk baby apparently it means something else because when i called they told me that i have to send an email about why i want to come why i love mr president and why i want him to win and stuff like that and then if they like what I write, that is when they will invite me. I actually recorded that conversation. I just listened to this. Hello? Hi. I have a question about the Meet the President okay. event on Sunday, March 4th. Okay. If you're interested in attending, I'll send you information when you need to email uh, something to you. And then if you get it, you will get the invite. Oh, if, if I, I get, get picked, is when I'll be invited? Yes. Yeah. Uh, would, would we be, be able, able to ask the President, president questions? questions? So what is the email? PVC Nigeria twenty fifteen at gmail dot com. Okay. Thank you so much. And you send your name, are you female, what do you do? Contact information phone number. Uh um your expectations of the president if you get re elected. And any additional comments on the president, if you like him, you hate him, you love him, why? Just any additional thing you want to say about the president. I have to tell this. We'll go to I have to write all the things before I would know whether I'm choosing to be there yeah, or not. Yeah, absolutely. You said that we're going to go through all of them and then we, we select some based on that. And then if you get it, we email you, we'll be calling you, let us know. Mm hmm yeah so that means if they don't like my question they may not call me to ask you understand i say why write 
RSVP when the thing is clearly strictly by invitation eh? honestly these people will never cease to amaze me I already knew that they probably won't invite anyone that doesn't say he or she loves the president or say he wants him to be re-elected and they probably won't take any question that they see as potentially embarrassing for Mr. President so anyway oh speaking of which eh, my yoga hey is it true that you have deployed that controversial uh, assistant inspector general of police uh, Joseph Mbu uh, the one that was causing trouble in in River State so you guys remember him is it true that you deployed him to Lagos State hey! The thing is true. Hey, say me say trouble. The man was causing trouble when he was in River State. Sure you understand. And now they brought him to Lagos State. Hey, there is God so. Oh, why now? Why do you have to do this when the election is just a month away, my yoga? You know people will talk. People are talking. Me, I want you to win. That is why I'm telling you all these things. This is not a very smart move. In case you don't know, my yoga, people are already saying that you brought him to Lagos so that he can rig the election for you in Lagos. Yes, so oh, my yoga, that is what people are saying. You know. A lot of people they have big mouths they don't know how to control themselves but i think you should know what people are saying so i don't think that it's a very smart move because the man was in a lot of controversy when he was a river state him fighting with tamechi and stuff like that and you know what as soon as he got to lagos he has started this drama eh? saying that this coming election will be fire for fire instructing his men to be ready to battle during elections if one of my men is killed I shall kill 20 of them. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Seriously? First of all, I don't know if people would be bold enough to attack a police officer during an election. Not to talk about killing him. But even if that should happen, let's assume that hoodlums kill a police officer on election day. How do we guarantee that in the process of these officers killing 20 of them in revenge, how do we guarantee that no civilian will be killed? Why would the assistant inspector general of police say something like this? How would they differentiate who is just just trying to cast his or her vote and and then he said that you have the power to stop the governor shoot shoot that would be uh fashola right yeah i mean i'm not saying that fashola is above the law he's not nobody is but the aig did not say exactly why his officer should stop the governor and then he said we are authorized by the constitution to arrest before during and after election like really what about being authorized to ensure election is not rigged why, why is this man talking like this and he just came to Lagos so, and he's already talking like this. By the way, a few days after he got to Lagos, the man went to Lucky and he didn't want to pay the toll gate fee. The policemen that were on duty at the toll gate refused to give him any preferential treatment. Do you know what he did? He arrested them. He arrested all the staff that were working there. He detained every one of them overnight. What? Because they didn't give him special treatment? Hey! No, 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 no. It's either nobody pays the toll gate at Lucky, which I would really appreciate or everybody pays. Why should some people pay and some people will not pay it's not fair but you guys know i don't know anything eh? <laughs> guess what i'm just keeping it real low Moving on to Uganda, <laughs> you guys know that there has been various cases of domestic violence including husbands killing their wives over allegations that the wives deny them of a, you know, doing it. You know, yeah, you hack them down just like that, eh? Because of sex. I can't even say it. It's too big for my mouth. If you have little children, you can cover their ears while I'm talking about this story. Yes. Hmm. Imagine a husband killing his wife because of sex. What? What is this word coming to? Hey, anyway, last week I read that another man has killed his wife oh, because she refused sex. Hey, and then I got another shock of my life oh, when I was reading that the Minister for Gender and Social Issues said that it's women's fault that they are not supposed to deny their husband of sex. I was like, whoa, mama, mama, peace. No, not mama, peace. What is wrong with you now? She later blamed men too. For killing their wives first of all we need to know why these women would deny their husband of sex now <laughs> i mean it's a reaction to an action so you understand no normal woman would just say she doesn't want it she you listen is sweet now <laughs> but you know there are all kinds of factors to consider has she been enjoying it or is it one-sided is it the only one that is you know or is is he also you know catering to her needs she you understand i'm just being real <laughs> because both parties are supposed to enjoy it is he willing to do the stuff that will make her you know <laughs> fly in the sky and stuff like me i you know i'm very innocent but these are things that i hear people talking about here you understand yes there is no reason whatsoever that justifies a man killing any other human being not to talk about his wife what that's that's 
just ridiculous. So just saying women don't deny your husband of sex is actually promoting that idea of treating women as sexual objects rather than human beings with their own right to make their own decisions. If something is wrong and she says she doesn't want it, I try to know why she doesn't want it before you hack her down. Now, please, I'm not in any way saying that women should deprive their husband of sex. <laughs> I can't even say the word, it is too big for my mouth. In fact, I don't see it as something that only men cannot do without. Women can also not do without. See, you understand? <laughs> Both men and women enjoy these things. The real issue here is domestic violence and it should be addressed. And just telling women to be more submissive and give their husband sex is not the solution. Effective communication is what I thought that this woman would have preached. Ugandan men, what a shame, what a shame, eh? And also for my women. If something is bothering you, that you don't feel like doing it, and take some time and tell him how you are feeling out. Don't just say, I'm not doing it, I'm not doing it tonight. Talk to him, sure you understand. <laughs> While some men don't appreciate having a wife, having someone to, to take care of your home and stuff like that, I can't help but think about people like Mubarak Batambuze, a 50-year-old man also in Uganda, whose wife was recently attacked by a crocodile, and yeah, she was killed. It's a very, very sad story. And this happened when she went to fetch water for the family at the river well guess what about four months after that the crocodile came back to that community everyone was afraid of what would happen next because you know that's where the women go to to fetch water not being afraid of what could happen to him this man Mubarak had a goldsmith make him a spear he spent five dollars the guy is not very rich for somebody like him five dollars is a lot of money because of the pain of losing his wife who was actually pregnant at the time yeah this guy didn't care whether he dies or not he fought with this crocodile even though all the men in the village were running away and they kept telling him not to face the crocodile the man faced the crocodile for one and a half hours until he killed this crocodile it doesn't bring his wife back but hey now everybody in the village feels safer if he didn't kill the crocodile it's possible that it would attack someone else so now they call him a hero and his story has been reported all over all over the world i just put this out there so that some men would learn to appreciate having a Wife. This man risked his life to avenge the killer of his wife. Can only say that may her soul rest in peace, but you guys know that I don't know anything. Guess what? I'm just keeping it real. My shout out this week goes to Esther Okade. Yes, yes, ladies and gentlemen, let me introduce you to 10 year old Nigerian girl in the UK who has been admitted into the university to study math. Oh my god, I'm like, what? 10 year old got into the university? What? I know that Nigerians are very good, you know, we are very brilliant. But to study math at the age of 10, what? I mean, you just have to give kudos to this lovely girl. 10 year old, she has enrolled on an open university course and she scored 100% in her very first test. Mm hmm. Of course, it runs in the family. Her mom is a mathematician, so go figure. And her six year old brother, Isaiah, is also following her footsteps. He's already doing calculus and advanced algebra at the age of six yeah in Willa this is Esther telling us why she loves maths I just love math all the numbers and the solving is like a mystery <sighs> <laughs> so how are you finding your degree it's easy it's easy super easy so how quickly do you think you're gonna do it my mm, I was thinking about two years Fantastic. So what do you want to do when you finish your degree? Well, I'll go to my PhD and then from there I'll start running my own business. I want to be a banker. So you want to be running your own bank? Yep. And how old do you think you'll be when you do that? Mm, 16 or 15. <laughs> Amalama, God bless you. She wants to own her own bank, yeah, when she grows up. And eventually she wants to become a millionaire. That is a big dream. I want to become a millionaire too. My sister, when you figure it out, let me know. By the way, why are these British papers not calling her Nigerian? Hey, hey, this thing gets me upset. I don't like it. If she committed a crime now, they would say Nigerian living in UK. Yes, or they would say of Nigerian parents. Now that she did a good thing, they are claiming her. Don't get me upset, Joe. I'm a Niger, Niger no more. Uh, someone was asking me, Adela, oh, it's not possible. How can a 10-year-old be? I said, my sister, 
Yes, it is possible. Anything is possible when you homeschool your children. Yes, yeah, so anything is possible. Even if you don't homeschool them, by the way, teaching them to read and write early in life before they start nursery school or whatever will help them a long way. At least we have a Nigerian lady that got admitted to the university in Canada at the age of 14. Yeah, and she went to school in Nigeria. So congratulations to Miss Esther. We are very, very proud of you. Guess what? I'm just keeping it real. Before I leave today, I like to read some of your emails. And the first one is from Simon. And he says, Hi Adiola, please keep informing people until it is well known all over that the people of Ekwe are suffering. Oh wow, we're still on this case of Ekwe. They still don't have electricity? What is going on? No power for five years. It is ridiculous but true. A lot of their people now go to Ijebuode or Aja to work. Wow. Every four years, politicians come to Ekwe and throw 100 naira. And also they will throw Wasua in this case to voters and it is all finished. All development stopped at Aja Leki. Wow. Thank you so much Mr. Simon for sending this. This is the third person confirming the fact that they've not had electricity for five years in Ekwe. I hope that the Nigerian government would wake up and do something about this. Eh? As this election is coming up now, do it as an excuse for people to vote for you and make sure they have stable electricity. Our next email is from Matthew Aino and he says, Hi Adiola. I'm amazed that you were surprised that some people didn't have electricity for six months. The people of Ibe Town in Ibejuleki local government area have not had light since 2012. What? Two years with no electricity. This you can confirm. I will appreciate if this is known to the whole world. Another community with no electricity for years. Since 2012, that is, this is 2015 now. That is going to three years already. How do people survive? Ah, this is not good, Nigerian government. Hey, there is God though. The next one is from Taye Adjilaye and he says, Hi Adiola. Am I the only one thinking that the so-called Boko Haram that the military people are displaying does not look real? Why would you say that? How many men will disguise as a lady and wear full beard? <laughs> Do they think that the man that we have been trying to catch for years will be that dumb and stupid? He's just standing there without a fight. This is, this is the man that said that he will never be caught alive. Something is not right. Mr. Tayoba Amidele, thank you for your email. I'm not going to say the Nigerian military lied, but hey, they said they caught this man that he was disguised as a woman. It's true that he forgot to shave or something. But another thing that is actually worrying me is the fact that there has been rumors that the PDP is grooming a man. That they want to come out and confess that he's Abu Bakr Shikau. And then this man will say Buari is the one that sponsors Boko Haram. So uh, I don't know how true this is, but this rumor has been circulating that they are seriously grooming some guy and that they are spending a lot of money to make him look like Abu Bakr Shikau and to also bribe a lot of northern leaders to say it's true that Buhari is sponsoring Boko Haram. So hey, anything is happening in Nigeria. If something like that can happen, then definitely this is nothing. I'm not saying the story is true. We'll wait and see if eventually anybody comes out and says, oh, he's a Boko Shikau and Buhari is the one sponsoring Boko Haram. All right, so before I leave, I have a really, really sad news. It's been bothering me for so long, as soon as I heard. So a few months ago, I came on the show and I talked about a woman that had breast cancer <laughs> Uh, Kubrat Yusuf and so many of you donated towards her treatment and it just breaks my heart to tell you that she passed away it's I, I um I got this phone call from her husband and I was so heartbroken because I was planning on interviewing her because I, I wanted her to to talk and she got better and then I said I would like to interview her and they said she needed to go through more treatments and stuff like that and she was doing so well and suddenly I got this phone call from her husband that, oh, she passed away. I was so heartbroken and I just want to take a moment to thank everybody that donated towards her treatment. Please don't think that what you did was in vain. You were the ones that kept her alive for as long as she lived. And I just want to thank every one of you. If not for your donations, she wouldn't have lived for as long as she did. Uh, they were married for 10 years and she was in her early 30s. So now he has a baby to take care of. Uh, it's been very, very rough for him. He calls me, he, he's just, he's so confused. He doesn't even know where to pick up his life now. And the fact that she didn't make it, you know, is just a huge, huge wound. And so if anyone would have that time to please give him a call, his name is Victor, Victor Adams. Please give him a call to encourage him. They've spent all the money that they have and then upon everything she died. So um, I can't even tell you what he's going through right now. So if you're able, please give him a call. This is his phone number to encourage him. If anyone is able to help him financially, please do. 
Uh, and once again, I just want to thank everyone that donated towards her treatment when she was her life, and everyone that also donates toward other people that I've talked about. So I'll keep talking about issues like this, and I'm hoping that they will all have good endings. So this breaks my heart, but I, I thought I would let you guys know. All right, guys, that's all the time that I have for emails. Please keep sending your emails to adiola.keepingitreal at gmail.com. All right, y'all, it's been real, and I'm keeping it real right up in here. Until next week, I'm going to see y'all later. Peace out.